all for being here. I'm so excited to, to finally see you all after we've been planning this conference uh, for the last year. Halifax is an amazing town. I hope you love it as much as, as I do. The history of Nova Scotia is amazing and rich and deep. Uh, Sunday night we'll be at the Citadel Historic Site and we'll have some historical tours and then some ghost tours so you can pick your flavor of tours and get a taste of that Nova Scotia history. Uh, speaking of taste, if you leave here hungry, I have failed you. Uh, that will not happen. We will actually, this is a little unusual for the event, we will be serving lunch here on site every day and it is a nice big full lunch. You will not be hungry. Tonight we have an evening reception in here. There is plenty of cheese. Uh, uh, there will always be cheese for me. Sandwiches. Uh, anybody here who know, has known me for more than five minutes knows I like to eat and so you know there's gonna be food. So grab a drink, grab a bite, talk to each other, uh, meet some folks that you don't know yet, learn about each other's projects and interests and what you have going on. Uh, this is community over code and frankly, I think community is best built, built with carbs and cheese. So let's get down to it, this state of the foundation that we're here for. I want to accomplish three things in the next few minutes. I want to thank the people who have done the hard work of this foundation for the last year. I want to look at the current state of this foundation that brings us all together. And I think most importantly, I want us to start thinking about what the state of it we would like to see in the future is. So every day, each of you wakes up, and you probably turn on your computer pretty much first thing in the morning if you're like me, and maybe you open your email and you look at your ASF mailing lists, or you open GitHub, or you open a blank document to start to write a blog post, and it's really easy in those moments to get kind of bogged down in the details of your project and what you have to do and the problems of that, and it's easy to forget the real wonderful things that all of your contributions are doing in this world. So about a month ago, our VP of MNP started a thread on the members list asking for examples of places where ASF projects were doing good in the world. So I wanna start by telling you three of those stories. The Global Biodiversity Information Facility, which is at gbif.org, exists to make biodiversity data open. We all like that word, right? You can get into rabbit holes on this site pretty fast. This is a visualization that I grabbed last night when I went into one of those rabbit holes about data on mollusks from, what does it say, like 1560 or something? Uh, for scientists who are not me, who actually use this information, which is Creative Commons licensed data, it's cited in four or five scientific papers every single day. Half of those users reported that their work would be absolutely impossible without the GBIF. Earlier this year, there was an economic impact study on the program, and it found that for every euro invested in the GBIF, it provided three euros in direct benefits to users and 12 euros in societal benefits. And to make this happen, there are 2,100 institutional databases connected into a data lake that is built on ASF projects, including the whole Hadoop ecosystem and the file formats like Avro and Parquet. Project Shield is a free distributed denial of service attack prevention service for any website that has media, elections, or human rights related content. So among other things, it has helped ensure critical information distribution and the survival of infrastructure websites during the invasion of Ukraine. During the last US election cycle, attacks on election information websites increased 400%. And in both of those scenarios, Project Shield was there to help. And Project Shield relies on Apache Beam. Woods Hole is our third. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution studies the many, many ways that the ocean is a really critical part, uh, really the critical piece of the Earth's interconnected climate systems. They do a ton of work in different research areas. So if you're not an ocean person, if you live inland and maybe you don't think about the oceans a whole lot, they are absolutely essential to our existence. Our oceans are a driving force in weather and climate. They store 83% of the world's carbon, they provide oxygen, they feed us, they provide industries through tourism and shipping. The oceans are critical. And so Woods Hole has a program called the Ocean, Ocean Observations Institute, the OOI. The OOI delivers 90 terabytes of data, including real-time data from 800 instruments, completely freely online. And so the NSF has just awarded them $220 million to keep doing that work. They describe it as monitoring the critical organs of the Earth. And it does all of that with the help of Apache Cassandra. So what you do matters. And it matters to a lot of people on this big blue marble. And on top of that, kind of matters to the people off of it, given that NASA is also using and contributing to ASF projects. In fact, I would say given the enormous scope of the projects that this foundation stewards, what you do matters 
to just about everyone, absolutely everywhere. And so I want you to remember that, like genuinely remember that when you're working on your projects and remember that when we're talking about what we want the future of this foundation to be. Because with those kinds of applications and the many, many more like them, the future of the foundation really, in a sense, is the future of everyone. So now I wanna do the second thing. I wanna start thanking the folks who make this happen, who, who do all of this work. So let's start with the people who keep the foundation itself alive so that the rest of it can happen. This is our board of directors, nine annually elected people who guide the foundation itself at a high level. Many of them are in this room. Raise your hand, board members. Over there, over there, over there, over there, yeah. So thank you, first of all, good job. So, uh, I have just gotten, Ruth Ruth is last year's board. This is the board that is in the annual report and I thought I went and compared and I apologize. So, that's a really good reason for all of you to go to apache.org, our newly redesigned and reorganized website to check out the current list of directors. But it is also an excellent point in that this is a board that changes every single year. And while all of these people did a fine job and the ones now are doing a fine job, most of them don't expect to be doing it for life. Uh, and there's a good balance in an organization when you have people who have institutional knowledge as well as people who have different experiences and a fresh perspective. So if that is something that interests you now or maybe five years from now sometime in, in your plan, find one of these folks or one of the folks who are on the board now and talk to them about what they do. Don't assume that you have to have been a PMC rock star or a member for 10 years or whatever. Don't make assumptions. The only job qualification here is that you really care about the foundation. That's how all those people got that job. So thank you for doing that. Second up in the line of things, uh, can't lie, it's always a good time to thank your sponsors uh, because running a foundation is expensive. You can read every detail of that in the annual report if you're interested, but if you're not a fan of financial tables, that's cool, I understand. Uh, but let's just say without these folks, we, we don't last very long. Uh, and these are just our foundation sponsors, of course. Rich mentioned all of our, our conference sponsors. Please do go visit their booths in the hall. You'll see them listed on signs like this around the event. And then finally, of course, you, you likely know we also have targeted sponsors who provide the foundation with contributions for specific activities or programs, maybe hackathons or donating cloud services, that sort of thing. So next on the list of appreciation are officers, which I definitely did double check, but there are no pictures. Sorry, there are way too many of you. <laughs> this talk, the state of the foundation, uh, which in the past has been called the state of the feather, is historically often a lot of slides with a lot of numbers about the things that these people and their teams do. I'm gonna bounce through those really quickly and I'm probably gonna miss a few because you all know how to read, I am reasonably certain, and all of that information is in our annual report on the website. And if you just, why would I read the annual report? Like that sounds really boring and not interesting. I do recommend reading it for two reasons. It, if you're in this room, it probably means that you care about the foundation and the annual report is where you find out what's going on in the foundation outside of that little area that you think about really hard all day. And two, you may find opportunities that interest you that you didn't even realize existed. Or maybe opportunities that are interesting to a friend of yours who you would like to bring into the foundation to help us all out. So first up, treasury and fundraising. Please note, these are technically two separate areas, but you can definitely see the relationship. And this year, the two of them have collaborated really closely to improve workflows and generally make the whole process a lot better. It's been a difficult year in this area, so I'm sure that, that all of you are very aware, whether it is from your own jobs, from your experiences, the news, budgets have been reduced across the board in travel, in sponsorships, in everything. Uh, there have been a lot of layoffs, general cutbacks. So I'm incredibly appreciative of both of our sponsors who have continued to help support the foundation and to our fundraising and treasury teams for the work that they do on this side. The legal affairs folks uh, generally provide a lot of education and this year that has included increasingly to government officials on open source in general, on the Apache license, and this year on the potential ramifications of legislation. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, the, this year, something else I thought was very interesting that came out of this group was policies for the usage of generative AI, uh, the assistant tools like GitHub Copilot, and the guidelines for that in ASF project contributions. Now I'm gonna try to call out in cases where I know folks are looking for help, what they would like help with. Legal Affairs is always seeking uh, to expand their network of attorneys who are willing to do pro, no, pro bono work. I suspect that is not a lot of people in this room, but it may be people you know. So if you do have legal-minded friends, please encourage them, uh, tell them what a great foundation this is and encourage them to help out. Infrastructure has a very large section in the annual report, and that's because they got a lot done this year, and it's pretty fantastic. So we're gonna make that reason three that you should go read the annual report. I couldn't have even begun to fit it on the slide. 
but I've been really impressed with how much this group has evolved over the last few years and all the stuff that they've been getting done. So thank you to them as well. Security, uh, so security this year responded to 1,396 requests. That is, uh, I believe that averages out to about four a day if you don't take any breaks for holidays or weekends because vulnerabilities don't actually care that it's your kid's birthday. So uh, high five there, and that is a small, small subset of the number of emails that actually came in. Those are the ones that mattered. The bulk of them were reports of potential vulnerabilities. You can see all those numbers. Uh, and then a, another good chunk of license confusion and, and general clarification things. Data privacy team performed a pretty significant migration without impacting uh, either our user privacy or site visits, so that was fantastic. This group is actually seeking an entire committee. If you are interested in data privacy, they would like to form a committee of community members to develop a training program to educate the entire ASF ecosystem on privacy issues. Uh, so if you're interested in that, again, I'm just going to keep saying annual report. You should go read it. That's where all of this is. Reach out. Conferences, oh look, you're here. You probably already know about this piece. Last year, we held two flagship events. We held the one in North America in New Orleans. Who was there? Yeah, uh, and then one in Asia as well. Did anybody go to a the Asia event? Yeah, <laughs> one, of, one of you. Awesome, was it great? It looks like it was great. Look at those registration numbers. So they were both very successful events, particularly we're returning to in-person after the pandemic. Uh, I actually had expected smaller numbers in New Orleans based on the things that we were seeing across the industry, and then we had to cap registration, so I, I had to apologize to a few people who wanted to be able to attend. Next year, we will add back in the European event that we used to have, so that's very exciting as well. Conferences in general really took a hit during the pandemic, but there's this aspect of them that, that we, and not just we, this foundation, but we in really every industry that has conferences, never quite figured out how to capture in the virtual form. And that's that beauty of serendipity, or what we often call the hallway track, those things that just wouldn't have happened if you didn't happen to run into the right person at the right time at the right cocktail party or in the hallway or after a talk. Nobody ever quite figured out how to do that virtually. And so while I loved the virtual events and the way that they were able to bring people in who otherwise had not been able to attend events, there is this other aspect to being able to gather in person that I'm very excited to be growing again. Now, speaking of Europe, a lot has happened in the last year in terms of public policy around software, and especially open source software. I have, I have joked a lot, but there's a big grain of, of, of truth in it, I think, that it feels like open source software ran the world pretty successfully for the last decade or two, and then one day in 2022, the world policymakers woke up and went, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> What's happening? So I, I did put a picture on this slide because this is a new role in light of all of those changes that have been happening. In June, in response to all of this, we created the Vice President of Public Policy role, and Dirk has since been doing a great job in that role, particularly with a focus on the CRA in the EU. As a little side detour from that that's, that's related to uh, what we've learned in the process of all of that new regulatory and policy movement happening is that our peers in other open source foundations agree that we need to be working together more. So our president, David Nally, and I attended an event called Open Source Congress in July at, on behalf of the ASF. The goal of that event was two things. One was to discuss all of that policy stuff happening around the world, and two, to discuss how we could better coordinate as foundation leaders and to discuss with one another our mutual interests and concerns and how we could work together to make everything better for everyone. So basically apply this entire idea of the community model to one another as foundations. The best way to do that hasn't quite come into existence yet. There are a few different thoughts, there are a few different plans that are maybe starting to roll, uh, but no concrete solution yet. One possibility already existed to some extent though. Uh, the OSI, the Open Source Initiative, has this thing called the Affiliate Program, and that has, it, it has room for growth. It's not a, a well-established program yet, but it is a good opportunity for this type of collaboration. It's a good start. So in the board meeting last month in September, the ASF board approved that we would join the OSI as affiliate members, which immediately opens up a specific opportunity, the new Open Policy Alliance, which has a fairly self-explanatory name. It is intended as a space for those, beginning with those affiliate members, but then expanding to other groups to come together to discuss policy issues. All that said, there is still a lot of room in this space for open source foundations to come together and collaborate in many ways. We have different missions and purposes, but we also have a lot of common interests and would benefit greatly from better collaboration. 
So I hope to see that growing over the next few years and that the ASF will not only be a part of it, but really step up to be a leader in that space. We are the ones who are gathering under this motto of community over code. And that is the spirit I'd like to bring to the broader open source ecosystem. Ideally, that is how all of these foundations are working, but I'm hoping that we can take the many years of experience that we have that maybe some of them don't and help lead there. So back to our VPs and their projects. We come to marketing and publicity. We brought in a new VP back in January, Brian Prophet. Many of who you have met him either here or in New Orleans or, or otherwise in the past. If you have questions not just about ASF marketing in general, but about marketing for your projects, he's going to host office hours on Monday in room 107 at 3.10 PM. So you can go ask him whatever you want. Uh, I just go ask him whatever you want that isn't about marketing. It might be fun. He'll also be doing a talk, though, about marketing for your projects earlier that day, Monday at 12.10. So maybe go to the talk first and then, and then go grill him on the things that you wanted to learn. Which brings us to brand. So this foundation has a highly valuable and recognizable name and brand, as well as the many, many project names that you all work on. Protecting those names and our brand and the reputation attached to them is incredibly valuable work that the VP of brand always leads. And over the last year, as in the many years before, our volunteers in this space have registered and protected our trademarks, advised our vast community on infringements, and just generally protected that very valuable brand. But brands are not static. They do evolve, uh, as you can see, some of our history and logos here. And earlier this year, as I'm sure most of you are aware, there was some public discussion about the Apache name and brand. And so the board approved and I led a committee of volunteers to write an evaluation of the history of similar branding and to make recommendations. So the feather has been with us a long time and I know it is very meaningful to uh, many people in the foundation, to many people in this room. It's been the symbol of this foundation in various forms for 20 plus years. But its meaning to the Apache and other native people for centuries, not for 20 years, is greater. So out of respect for that and as a result of that committee and its recommendations to the board, our marketing team is now working on a logo redesign initiative. So what is next? Those of you who are members should have received an email to the members list earlier this week asking for your input through a survey. That survey is open until next Friday, and I, we would really like your thoughts. And it's for two reasons. So you'll see when you take that survey, it's really about what the foundation means to you as members. And so of course, we're gonna use that information to design the new logo, to think through the new brand. But beyond that, I'm really excited to hear those responses because I wanna hear what you as members see as the current and future of the foundation. As a side note, if you open that survey and you read those questions and wondered what any of that had to do with a brand at all or a logo or really why any of this even matters, if you think branding is stupid fluffy stuff, uh, I will do a branding 101 kind of talk on Monday afternoon at 410. So if you think this is just stupid, make it pretty work, you should definitely come. I'm not gonna talk about the ASF brand and it specifically, but I will try to help you understand why it matters and, and show you some, some stories of people who did it very badly, which is always fun. So to wrap things up, early on in this talk, I said I wanted to thank everyone who makes this foundation's work possible, but I haven't thanked uh, a lot of a thousand people yet, thousands and thousands of people, each of whom is truly exactly as important as all the people that have been named on these slides or whose names I have called out because the work that our members and our committers and actually literally hundreds of thousands of contributors do is where the action happens. So we're now at 9,401 committers. The reason I think this is cool, so we added about 500 this year. Next year is our 20th, 25th anniversary, so here's the goal. 10,000th contributor in our 25th year. You guys with me? We're gonna make this happen? Yeah, that would be fantastic. We have, yeah, no, we don't applaud till it happens next year. But next year when I get on this stage, or David gets on this stage, we're gonna applaud that we made it happen. That's the mission. 746 currently active members. You can see that we've retired and graduated quite a few podlings this year, so I think that's an exciting space for some opportunity. And I threw in this Time Magazine cover uh, because it really is kind of about the same thing. So back in 2006, Time Magazine called the person of the year, you, which was wildly mocked at the time as ridiculous. But the reasoning was because that was the year that collaborative content defined the internet. And since I'm here to thank you for collaboratively making that internet happen, went with the ridiculous Time Magazine cover. So high five you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and the tens of thousands of people out there. So high five you. But now, who, who next? 
This year we've been running a social media campaign called First ASF Contribution, where people share what their first contributions to the ASF were, because we all, every one of us, everybody in this room had to start with one, right? And these are the now who. This is the who next. So now that I have thanked all of you, your job is to go out and find other folks for me to thank next year. Because for the foundation's future success, we need Lenny and Deborah and all of the people like them to make those first contributions because that is the only way that they can make a second contribution and a third one and so on and so forth. And the most likely way for them to find community here is through the community that already exists. That's you. Bring them in, welcome them, help them be a part of the ASF's future. I gave you some examples of groups that are looking for help. You can probably think of others yourself. If you can't think of any way and you have a friend who would like to join the Apache Software Foundation, you let me know and we will find a way for them to help. Because as I mentioned, next year is the ASF's 25th anniversary. That's kind of forever in technology time, right? And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't wanna see you all here in another 25 years. I would like to be old and enjoying a different kind of community that involves a sandy beach and a fruity drink. You are welcome to join me in that community. But I would like us to be building this foundation for the future that so somebody else is in this room in 25 years. So this foundation exists, but it's not us. We're gonna be on the beach with fruity drinks. And that means that we're building for the future technologies, for those future contributors, and we need to be thinking about that every day too. This, this Apache Software Foundation is our community. It is each and every one of you and the thousands of people who aren't in this room with us today. It is those community members who are gonna join us tomorrow, that Linny and that Deborah and everybody we haven't even met yet. It is your communities who enable that global biodiversity information facility to save communities of wildlife. And it is your communities who make it so that Project Shield can help communities of Ukrainians and communities of electors from being, so that they can do what they need to do. And it is your communities that make it so Woods Hole can help figure out how to make this planet habitable for the next 25 years so that our future contributors can have this meeting. So the code they all run matters, but it's really about those communities. Building community over code, both metaphorically and as an event, will be the foundation of the success of this foundation for that next 25 years and beyond. So thank you all for being a part of it. Again, I hope you enjoy Halifax as much as I do, and I look forward to, to sharing the carbs and cheese with you.